Hey everybody, welcome to another new player guide. This time we're uh, going to be continuing the core sets with uh, Daisy Walker, the Librarian. Uh, if this is your first time watching one of these guide videos, uh, Travis made this deck and how it worked was uh, it's made with uh, only with two core sets and then we're going to talk about each cycle individually of what they could add because we imagine that a lot of new players don't just dive in and buy the whole collection at once. Uh, so if you only have a specific cycle, this would be a great video for you and how to upgrade your deck. Uh, likewise, if you only have one core set, we highly recommend picking up another one or proxying those cards so you get the full experience. You might think it does not matter, but it truly does matter. Travis, I'm going to pass it to you. What was your aim with this Daisy Walker deck? Uh, well, Daisy's the core set seeker, so you want to investigate a lot. And uh, she hits a free action every turn, which you can only use on tome abilities, so obviously you're going to want some tomes to make use of that. Like, getting free actions is very good. Um, other than that, uh, looking at, like, her stat line first, she's uh, she's got 5 health, 9 sanity, the inverse of Roland, and yet it's actually kind of not as big a deal yeah. having 5 on one stat and 9 on the other, because you're not going to be fighting monsters for the most part if you can avoid it. Um, but... She's got three brain, which is, uh, it's like a reasonable number. Five book, which is like actually incredible. Two punch and two foot, which are both so-so, but uh, the foot's the only one that's ever going to really matter. The the punch is basically non-existent. Uh, um, so in the uh, starting deck, which is built with just two cores, uh, the, I believe the only Thomas here looking over the list is Old Book of Lore. Yeah, there really aren't many <laughs> yeah of course but also at the same time old book of lore is a very good book right like for it's know, like a pretty good book but it's really good when you don't have to spend an action exactly for it. that that that's yeah that with daisy it's very good it's a nice thing to have and uh if it's your only book to start out you'll still get a lot of value of it uh some other notable cards that uh are in the core set that would be good for daisy dr milan christopher helps get her book better and gives her resources whenever she gets clues which is what you will be doing uh, and the research librarian is a way for you to tutor your old book of lore, find it in your deck, and immediately put it into play. Or put it into your hand and then put it into play. Yeah. The, the purple cards in this list, like the other ones are all just kind of investigating good. Mm -hmm. With the exception of like Mind Over Matter, which is like there for the occasional times that you need to not uh, get wrecked by a monster or whatever. Yeah. Um, and there's only three purple cards in the deck, despite purple having several solid options. Like, you could play Shriveling and try and be some kind of... Try and deal with monsters on your own, but that's just not... When you play multiplayer, you want to specialize your builds as, as much as you can. Yep. Um, War Protection, Drawn to the Flame, should be kind of obvious while they're, while they're here. They're both very, very good cards and should be considered in most purple decks. Most people that can play them. Uh, but Holy Rosary is, like, a bit of an out... Liar, where it provides two brain soak, which like isn't super necessary for Daisy, because the only card she has that takes that deals damage to her or sanity damage is going to be the water protection, and it makes her brain one more better, which like isn't super relevant, but uh, pushing you from three brain over to four brain is actually relevant on a lot of um, a lot of treachery cards. Yeah. So, but there's a there's definitely a lot better uh, accessories to upgrade into. Which we, we, we will be getting to. Slots on the Holy Rosary, but we'll be getting to those right away. Uh, other noticeable notable things in the deck. Uh, it's you have a, only two core sets, so guts, perception, and unexpected courage. Uh, with well, I see with what Travis has uh, built with this deck, because even though Daisy has two fi uh, foot and two fists, you're not going to really be doing those things. Uh, so there's really no need to have overpower manual dexterity just bumping up your skills that are relevant is better for a kind of a seeker role like this and unexpected courage can fill that gap if you ever need it for your foot test yeah mind over matter also does just kind of do overpower or manual dex's job but better in yeah. this case unless it's not a treachery card but yeah yeah uh and this is her special daisy's tote bag where she has two additional hand slots to hold tome assets uh, which gets a lot more exciting as the as you get more content into your game. Uh, then the Necronomicon is one of those books, and it's just going to be there, but it's not like, you know... It's not, actually really soft, especially if you bad, can yeah. find the tote bag. Because, like, if you look at even the punishment, you're like, 
Okay, so there's just another auto fail shit. Like, how often do you draw the blessing shit, right? It's you know, it's, it's not too bad. All the all the time, as soon as it's an auto fail. That's true. Yeah, that, that's usually how it does work. <laughs> uh, all right, let's get into some upgrades in the core set. Take it away, Travis. Uh, magnifying glass is an easy one. Um, I'm always a fan of having two magnifying glasses in my base level yellow decks, and then upgrading them into one level one magnifying glass and like another another thing <laughs> yeah um disc of examna is one of those upgrades i was talking about this can replace that holy rosary for you it just gives you a free way out of dealing with enemies mm -hmm. very nice card uh, encyclopedia is like the other book that daisy gets in the core set um very very strong support card same as the old book of lore giving people plus two to skill check for free is like yeah like, yeah, not even, like, a skill checks, right, but, like, to a skill. Yeah. So you yeah, can be yeah, like, hey, Monster yeah. Fire, you get a plus two punch for you, all three of your actions. Yeah. yeah. Cryptic yeah. Research is just, like, Yeah, you just nice. draw three cards. Really. Not just time. you, but anybody. Yeah. All right, we're moving on to the Dunwich Legacy. So here are some of the level zero cards that are added. Uh, shortcut, you know. I think we've said this Many, in many ones. good cards for Daisy in this cycle. Uh, shortcut just means lets you move for free, which is very strong. Uh, it can also let you move someone else for free, which is very strong as well. Yeah, shortcut's one of those cards that like starts in my yellow decks, and then I need to find a reason to take it out. Yeah. Um, uh, I've got a plan. Is a nice uh, little way to deal with monsters. Uh, there aren't too many of those that Seekers have at level zero, especially. They get more as you level up, obviously, but. Um, you can, uh, it's just a really nice event, especially like, it can be a little bit awkward with some of the scenarios where you need to be spaying clues very frequently for things, but uh, especially the Dunwich Legacy, there's a couple of monsters that it's really nice to just be able to chunk people for four damage or whatever, especially yeah. with that base five book, like, ooh. <laughs> uh, Alyssa Graham, she seems, uh, she's a, a neat little addition. I think that's what you said in your note, like, it's hard for her to compete with... Uh... Dr. Milan Christopher, because he's really good, right? Mm -hmm. uh, especially when uh, you're playing without the taboo list. Mm -hmm. um, but she's a cute little thing if you want to have a little bit of control over the encounter deck. She doesn't need she doesn't need effect with that. Yeah, Dr. Will and T. Mailson here is uh his effect actually like isn't super useful. It's kind of cute. Like you don't mind throwing away clues too often as a yellow character because you can just pick them up with deduction or working a hunch to make up for that tempo loss or you're drawn to the flames. Um, and he plays into that sort of mythos deck interaction that Alyssa Graham does as well. The big thing he has going for him is he only costs one resource. And if you look at this deck, your cards cost a lot of resources. Yeah. And he provides two heart sink or two heart health and two brain health and he just he just soaks a very large amount of damage for the low cost yeah while still having like a pretty okay effect yeah i mean he actually does seem like uh really good for a kind of defensive like because if there's only like x many enemies in the deck he's a good way to be like no i don't want this and then get something else yeah like he wouldn't be in there to like wouldn't be looking at him to replace dr milan but he's He'd just be a different card in your deck. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another uh, level zero is Inquiring Mind, which is just a good way because you're you're, you're usually going to be on a location with clues, and it's a good way to just get three wild symbols. Uh, and then there's yeah, I would play this over Unexpected Courage in most cases. I think yeah. for yellow characters, not all cases, but like most. Uh, then there's Strange Solution, and it's two upgrades. Uh, there's three upgrades, but only two of them. No, there's two, Justin. Yeah. <laughs> Two are worth the time. Mm -hmm. um, this was back in the day when yellow could just uh, have all of its weaknesses solved and be very good at uh, whatever it wanted. Uh, and Strange Solution, the upgraded one, Acidic Icker, and uh, Freezing Variant are both very good at killing and running away from things. Yeah, Acidic Icker is like... Why, though? <laughs> yeah, no, I, you know, I'm, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. <laughs> Uh, we got Delve Too Deep, which may look scary, but that extra victory, especially in, like, the first two to three uh, scenarios, uh, will really add up. It may look scary, up. but that's only because it is. Yeah. 
My biggest recommendation is don't be like Travis and uh, confirm with everyone else that things are okay to go for it. Uh, it's not the flavor of the game, Justin. You're <laughs> supposed to do it. You just do things. Now, there's also updated deduction, uh, deciphered reality, and Pathfinder. Uh, deciphered reality is a good way to get a lot of clues, and you'll feel very powerful when if you can get it, especially if you get multiple locations, which you should only use this if you can get multiple, multiple locations. Yeah, it requires a little bit of setup, but like once it happens, it's like, mm, so yeah. good. Uh, and Pathfinder's just great. Yeah, like as a yellow character, you're probably not going to be engaged with enemies, ideally, too often. And it's just kind of, assuming you're not, it's just like another free action. Yep. So, you know, if you have a tome and you got your Pathfinder out and then you're, you're like five actions a turn, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, move, free move actions in particular are very good as you can, you know, as the clue guy, you can use get, it to move for free to a new location with clues on it yeah. and then spend all your actions to get the clues. So. Uh, and then there's higher education, which... Uh... It's good. This card's, uh, yeah, 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 I think, yeah, it's just good, yeah. It's good. That's a way to say it. Yeah. should try playing with it. You should. Just live it. <laughs> Have a little raven on your shoulder and go live life. Yeah. All right, we're on to the Path of Carcosa. What do we got here? Fieldwork? Yeah, fieldwork, uh, it's uh, in your notes for the, on the deck, which uh, I'll hopefully remember. But there's the description for uh, the Arkham DP page with uh, Travis's written description down below in the R description. Is um, there actually going to be this time, Justin? That's why I said I'm hoping. Fingers crossed that I remember. <laughs> the problem is when I schedule something, I like wipe my hands and I'm like, that's good. That video is going to be up on this it's day. It's done. Uh, but field work, it, it doesn't like it, it'll. You'll get a lot of value out of it. Like it doesn't seem like you will, but you'll get some some good work out of field work. Yeah, that's a card that I really brushed off until I saw. Uh, you guys play with it. I think it was Bryn, maybe, who was playing Ursula. Yep. And it was very good for him. Yeah, the card's just pretty cool. Helps you do anything you need doing. Uh, yeah. no, no Stone Unturned help you search through your deck so you get some consistency. That's always a good and thing. And other people. And other people, yeah. Uh, David Renfield, uh, he's a great resource engine, and he's he, he dies easily, so, you know. Yeah, David's actually, like, uniquely quite good most of the time for a day's deck you're gonna want your uh you're gonna want your allies to be giving you a plus book mm -hmm. most of the time because that's what you're trying to do but daisy can like get by without that because she has five book base mm -hmm. uh david giving you plus one brain isn't like it's good for the same reasons that holy rosary is kind of good but uh he's actually kind of worth the asset slot maybe over dr milan because he really turbos out those resources to pay for all your expensive assets like books are expensive man and then he also soaks two heart damage which is daisy's weak set so yeah and then when he takes two of them and he dies you're like good riddance i got my value out of him and now we just got yeah you don't like, even feel bad about it <laughs> uh logical reasoning is uh just some healing uh but also gets rid of terror cards which can be relevant in uh mm -hmm. you know in scenarios yeah, logic reasoning is just like all around a very good card. It's a little bit expensive with two resources, and like you have to have a clue, which for most yellow characters shouldn't realistically be a problem. But it's a very strong support card, allowing your teammates you to heal your monster slayers brains. You know, yeah. if you have Roland and he's only got five base brains, you're healing like almost fifty percent of what he can take. Um, Gamma of Terrors is also surprisingly useful, yeah. hitting things like Frozen and Fear in particular can be very strong, again, for those low-brain investigators. And it also commits for two brain symbols. Yep. This card does a lot. Yeah. Uh, next up, St. Hubert's Key, which is a good time. Uh, this is like Holy yeah, Rosary. But yeah, this, like, if, if you have Path Carcosa, just, like, s switch this with Holy Rosary, right? Yeah. <laughs> because uh, it does what Holy Rosary does, but, like, you know, it's cooler. Cause and it gives you a book which you actually care about. Yeah, and it's like a scalding hot needle, which is, you know... I don't think that's a key, but what do I know? Yeah, they were just like, uh, this is in, in our art file. Let's, uh, yeah, St. Herbert's key. This is great. <laughs> you got any keys in there? And they're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, put the needle in the arm. That'll work. Yeah, that's something good for it. But yeah, it's um yeah, that card's just great. I uh, I've never actually played with a Travis and Bryn always because it's unique. So we play it with three players. It's snatched up pretty quick by someone else. But 
Yeah, I play lots of purple characters. It's a good time. Uh, now we have in uh, this cycle, there's Archaic Glyphs, and it's two upgrades. Uh, I've never played this, so I'm gonna have to pass this on to someone else. Wow. Are they good? What do they do, Travis? Take it away. Or Bryn, I haven't uh, played, play. have played them, Bryn? I haven't played with these ones, no. All right, take it I away, like Travis. These ones. So these ones have, like, they've got really weird typing where they're, uh, the first one's an item, a cult tome, and then the other two are spells for some reason. Uh, oh, so that? being a tome, Archaic Glyphs, you can do the discard -y thing to do it for free without spending an action as Daisy. And the spells take up a spell slot, which you're probably not using anyway, because... Like, it, it's really nice that it liberates up your hands to hold more books, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, the two options you have here are another evasion option, which is, like, again, kind of the less good one. But, like, still, it still has its uses. And the other one lets you pretend that you're Rex. Yeah. Just and that's you really want, good. You want to be... <laughs> when they're doing <laughs> the, uh, they're the design, like, the, for Path of Carcosa, like, ah, hey, let's just put Rex on a card. Let's do it. Yeah, they just everyone could be Rex. That's how we balance yellow, yellow investigators. Yeah, the uh, you know uh, they do seem pretty good. Like, cause you get a clue out of it, and then you get something out of it. Like even for the the evasion one, right? Just a uh, you you can evade by doing what you do well, and also progress the game. Does seem like a pretty good investment, and being free for Daisy to activate it makes it a lot less of a commitment in the first scenario where you're hopefully able to do it. Yeah, that's a really big thing that these ones have going for them, I think, is that they take up this, the arcane slot as opposed to a hand slot, which is the arcane slot doesn't matter for a lot of yellow investigators. Yeah. What's next? Arcane Insight. Oh, it's a spell. Yeah, speaking of. <laughs> uh, uh, this one's just like... Yeah. It's like bare flashlight. They yeah, just take yeah. up a hand. It is, yeah. Basically. And it's, yeah, it's till, until the end of the turn as well, so everyone can take advantage of it. Right? So, like, in there's cases when you're playing when you're, like, there's no enemies and you're, there's someone else who's like, I have nothing to do. And I'm like, well, here, this now has a shroud of one. I'm going to go somewhere yes, else to this participate. harder one. You have fun. Yeah. Uh, forewarned, uh, it, it lets you cancel cards you draw. It's basically ward of protection, but you just need a clue. Uh, and it, it does have a limit, a bigger, a, a scope of what you can cancel. Um, but. Uh, Speaking of ward of protection. Yeah. We have the level two upgrade right here. And I. This is always one of my first upgrades when I'm playing a purple character in multiplayer. Because, like, being able to go from canceling your cards to anybody's cards is huge. Yeah. Yeah, you don't just get to cancel your own Ancient Evils. You get to cancel everybody's Ancient Evils. And everyone loves yeah. it when you cancel uh, their Ancient Evil. You're like, you're a hero. Thank you so much. Yeah. They draw a card, and you can just see on their face, they're like, oh, damn it. And you're like, what if you Yeah, we're, we're not, that? friend. Uh, and then shortcut, which is like a community shortcut. It's a it's a very strong card, especially. Uh, I think this is one that is good, uh, very good. But uh, it, when you know the scenarios, it can be become like incredibly good, right? Like when you know what's yeah. in a scenario and its location layout. It's also a little bit subjective to the campaign. Yeah, but, definitely. Um, like, another thing that War of Protection has going for it is like one thing that we don't talk about a lot is like generating goodwill between your the people you're playing with because protecting them from a nasty treachery is like something you can have in the bank when a monster comes after you and you like <laughs> you abandon whatever you're doing and come save my ass Travis we would come save your ass even if you didn't stop bad stuff from happening to us you know that yeah I know but but it's good to have that in, that insurance I understand mm-hmm as funny as it is to watch you struggle to deal with like a whipper will or what have you. <laughs> well, like I have one foot, one punch, someone save me. This will kill me in four turns. All right, we're on to the Forgotten Age. Uh, first uh, thing on this is the Tooth of Etsley, which uh, helps both brain. It's a, it's a defensive item. It helps you uh, survive uh, treachery cards that might show up. Yeah, this is another alternative to the Rosary. It does uh, if, a very similar thing. If you had a choice, Travis, uh, between Rosary and the Tooth of Etsley, if you only had Forgotten Age, which one would you more likely run in this deck? Would you stay with the Tooth Rosary? of Etsley. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, the Tooth The yeah. tooth is sick. Not it only is. does it get you the, the four brain defensively, but also, like, if the game's asking you to test foot, it's usually three or bigger, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, like, if I was playing a Daisy deck where I needed to be able to interact with the monsters with like shriveling or something like that i might look at the rosary but in most cases i would play the tooth of Esley. and i mean also like it has that uh the 
the little reaction on it. There also are book tests on treachery cards, and then sometimes this just turns into the game deals you a card, you solve it easily, and then you also draw a card. Yeah, feels good. Uh, Ancient Stone. This cycle's weird, unidentified mechanic. Does anyone... This one you have to pay experience for the base version of. Mm -hmm, you do. Which always makes it harder to commit to. But yeah, it, Daisy's it... like pre pretty comfortable with this one. Um, because it scales off of how much you succeed the investigation by. And if you look at, look at our base Daisy deck, not only does she have like five book, she can get like one or two from her magnifying glass. She can get one from Dr. Milan. Uh, working a hunch commits for two. Perception commits for two. Unexpected courage could be another two. Like, it's pretty easy for her to really shoot the moon on this one and yeah. just get a big, big there, payoff. You can sit very comfortably at like seven more often than not with your book. With yeah. This deck. Uh, and then they have a pretty big payoff where, depending on the shroud, uh, it's uh, you you get the payoff from these cards, which I've seen Travis use them, and they are very strong. <laughs> Justin cards. trying to explain these cards that he's never seen before. Because <laughs> you, you play with these uh, ones, right? Or am I just dreaming that? Because you have one that was like oh, yeah, nine. We've definitely we've definitely played with these ones. They I got one in my Mandy deck. I have two in my Mandy deck actually, but they're different ones because I have that. Uh, yeah. You get them a random one. <laughs> Uh, I have the so like when they you draw both any scale number of cards, of, it's this the draw one, right? Yeah, this is this is the card the card draw one where you can spend the secrets to do something beneficial to your team. Some of them do damage, one, or one of them does damage, one of them heals. Yeah, sanity. Four. Yeah, one of them heals four from any card, which is pretty nice for not only for your uh, goons, but also like you can heal up their allies or something like that. If you have something like a Diana Esperance and you just wanna. Keep her I can't remember. No, she doesn't use brain. She uses hearts. No, yeah, she uses the other one. Well, whatever. It, people like to put brain damage on their allies, and you can fix that, and that's good. <laughs> and the one that does damage by drawing cards, nothing will make you feel more like a yellow character than that. Yep. Uh, Premonition's just a great card. Play it. It's, you know, helps you plan yeah, ahead. Yeah, it's like the, uh, the shortcut of purple cards, almost. Yeah, yeah. Whereas it's not like so obviously strong as water protection is, but like it starts in all my purple decks. So I'm like, I got especially in a multiplayer uh, game because you can get something and be like, so who wants to spend this or waste an action running into a brick wall, right? Yeah, it's great for playing around things when you're like, we have this super, you know, there's a really big monster, we really need to kill it in one action, one or two actions, so we can't afford to fail the test. And then you're like, oh, we got minus three. And then, you know, as Daisy, you're like, I have five book. I can just investigate and use that. And you can try again instead of you failing. Yeah, very strong. Yeah, yeah. Even even as Daisy, you could be like, well, I have an encyclopedia and I can make your skill big enough to pass this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Counterspell. Good, good way to say no to the game. Just what purple does. Yeah, it's just an okay purple card. Yeah, Recall the Future is a fun card to play with. Uh, mm -hmm. You can kind of predict the future and then get a bonus from it. Uh, and then yeah, recall the future is like a, a weird card. We could probably do like a most of a video on like this card in particular, or at least the cycle of cards. But like, it's like an unexpected courage for every test, kind of. Because mm -hmm. especially with five buck, when you're investigating, there's only so many results that are going to fail you. Yeah. And you can just like, you know. In the best case scenario, like it's the skull and there's three skulls in the bag or whatever, so you're like, yeah, I'll just name the skull. And then if I drop one, that's three more results that result that I get to pass on. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, and then Defiance, which is, um, it's a nice card. Uh, there are, uh, you know, you're mostly going to be investigating, so those symbols probably aren't a problem for you. But just some more insurance to make sure you're passing these tests in a card like that. Yeah, they're nice for your teammates as well. And this one is significantly better than the level zero one. Like the level zero one's pretty meh. Uh, not unplayably bad, I don't think, but like it's pretty meh. Yeah. Um, whereas this one's like actually good. And um, then it's a good tome. We, we're three cycles in. We've done it. Yeah. <laughs> we found another. We tome. finally, they finally did it. <laughs> and this one's insane. Uh, Brain, you want to talk about this one? I think you're the one who's actually played with it. So. You guys know how we tell you that you should play Will to Survive in all your red decks? That's like what this card is. It's like five cost of Will to Survive, but you get to pick the three tests that you don't draw a token for. Mm -hmm. It could be someone else, that. too. 
yeah like it can be somebody else's test all the they just have to be at your location or have been at your location at some point during your turn yeah this card is very strong it also uses secrets which are surprisingly easy to come by yeah yeah you could definitely look at playing some things like uh truth or fiction i think it's called in your base deck if you're looking to uh, level up into the or to buy noptic manuscripts very quickly but yeah and you also get to use the action to charge somebody else up for their next thing for free if you want to yep. this is even yeah. better in this deck than it is in normal decks and the action is free yeah and you already want to play research librarian so yeah, and yeah. He, he can find it. He'll be like, I found the manuscripts. And you're like, okay, get out of here. You're like, these aren't, these aren't manuscripts. These are some broken bits of rock. <laughs> He's like, what do I He's know? like, yeah, I slipped on the way over here, my bad. <laughs> I broke this ancient old... Uh... <laughs> Whoops. All right, yeah. on to the circle undone. Uh, sorry, before we go into this, I want to say one more thing about the Noptic manuscripts. So if I have experiences a lot to... If I had 10 experiences a lot to soak into one card to upgrade in your deck, but it's worth noting that... Because of the existence of research library and the consistency he provides, that spending your experience on tomes is much more valuable than spending it on other cards because you're just that much more likely to see it. Because it's like if you spend your ten experience on two copies of Noptic manuscripts, because of research library, it's actually like you have uh, four copies in your deck. Yeah. Definitely. So you should strongly consider upgrading your tomes to better versions if you can. All right, Hawkeye folding camera. This is uh, not a tome, but it's a camera. Uh, it's a key way to bump <laughs> yes. up your stats. Uh, it makes your brain four and uh, book six, which are going to be very easy for you because you're getting the clues off the locations anyway. Yeah, if you have if you have one of these and you have a Saint Hubert's key, oh. suddenly your stat lines off the chain. Yeah. Yeah, this card's like it requires a little bit of setup, and it's not like super super good, but it's like a pretty okay. Uh, alternative if you don't really feel like playing magnifying glass or flashlight and you want to try something else out. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Then we can crack the case. Good way to get uh, This one is really good for Daisy. Again, your cards cost many resources and this gives you resources. Yep. And that's good. Yeah, one cool interaction with crack the case is if you have a working not working a hunter or a drawn to the flame, you can just play that to grab the last clue on a very high shroud location without making a test and then just gain, you know, like six or seven re resources for free. Yeah. Uh, Deny existence, another great way to say no to the game in purple. It's void of protection, but not from the core set. Yep. And uh, then we got the cult lexicon, another tome. I've not played with many of these card that brings? cards. But Travis, you played with this one, right? Yeah. Uh, I actually kind of hate this card because the design set basically explores for yellow and lets them do something that I don't think they should be able to do at level zero, which is Tesla's damage. Because hmm. the card you get is like a spell that lets you discard yeah you draw you draw two then no, you, you draw two. two yeah and then you and either then you... gain a resource for each card you discarded or get to ping something yeah something like that i'm gonna see if i have that i'm gonna go look that up real quick uh as he's doing this i'll just say uh you should note that it's a tome so once again you can find it with your research librarian and librarian LeBrian, what the heck happened to my brain there? But um, Librarian, and uh, you can then start dealing that Tesla's damage early on in the game, which uh, can solve problems that might show up if your goon is elsewhere or preoccupied, or if you haven't given that insurance to protect you by uh, using your water protections on them. Yeah, Blood Right is uh, draw two cards, discard up to two cards from your hand. For each card that you discard, you can either gain a resource or spend one resource to deal damage to enemy your location. This action does not cost, does not provoke a tax opportunity. So yeah, there's one thing like I kind of hate about this one and the Hollowed Mirror is like, I look at them and I read what they do and I'm like, why wouldn't I play this in every deck that could? Like they're so good for what they do and I don't think the limit one per deck is an ex is like a reasonable. No, the real uh, limiter on them. The real cost for these is that if you want the bonded cards, you have to be committing the slot. Yeah, I still yeah, think that they should be like level one or whatever. But yeah, 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 maybe, yeah. maybe maybe they should. Uh, this one's also especially easy for like someone like Daisy to get out, right? So that does make it even bigger of an issue with her. Yeah. 
All right. Like for Daisy, I'm kind of happy to see it because it's like actually a level one tome that's playable. It isn't old book of lore, so that's pretty neat. <laughs> I uh, love zero tome. Do you ever miss Mistress? Look how many books there are, and a card that makes books better. This one's sick. This is the Daisy Walker cycle. Yeah, this is the book package. This is dream. Uh, yeah, Dervermis Mysterious is... Uh, I don't think any of us have played with the... I don't know, Bryn? I played with it once. Uh, it's really good. You get to you get to play your spells and insights from your discard pile for the low, low cost of adding Doom to the game board. Yeah, that's not too bad, especially when you can, like, dumpster when you draw your Necronomicon or whatever. Use your research library to find Necronomicon to give yeah. you your book. Yeah, there's <laughs> also there's also a spell in one of uh, in one of the sets that removes all Doom from a thing that you're... Yeah, Moonlight control. Light Rituals and Dunwich, I believe. It is, yeah. Yeah. But which no, like, kinda, playing which is kind of cute, but like getting to play Drawn to the Flame twice with only one copy of it or like working a hunch again, that's pretty solid. Uh, and you get or to do it for free, matter. right? No, my or matter. What am I thinking? There's a lot of uh, lot of insights and spells that you want to be playing again. They're yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, you just got to be careful with when exactly you're putting Doom into play. Yeah. Whoa, Esoteric Atlas is like free ultimate movement with Daisy. It's insane. Yeah, it's like Pathfinder, but better, kind of. Yeah. Kinda. It's like Pathfinder, but different. Yeah. For Daisy, it's like kind of better. Yeah, because it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like, I like Esoteric Atlas a lot. Especially in Daisy, because you get to move for free, but you can just skip locations that you don't want to be in. Because, I don't know, maybe there's Whipperwills there and they're scary or something. Uh, knowledge and power also uh, seems pretty sweet. You can uh, exhaust uh, more activations of your tome, or even while they're still in your hand. Seems like a good time. Yeah, that one's uh... okay. So that one's really good because not only does it let you uh, use like a second ability on one of your ones that has like you can use your Dervermis Mysterious while it's in play a second time. Mm-hmm. Also, like if your hand is full of if your hands are full of tomes already you can use it to get like a free movement out of your esoteric atlas one time to really just get out of there yeah. and then also if you don't think you're gonna need the atlas anymore you can trade in for a different card yeah yeah it seems uh seems very good you can other power is like very good for daisy you can play it out of your discard pile with the vermis mysterious and you need to play the Vermis Mysterious. And put two of them into play. Inside of my book, there's just another book. <laughs> Not even a different book. No, it's just the same one. Uh, we got some uh, These are also tomes, yeah. They're not super good, but I feel... I have the, I mentioned them because you are fairly limited on tomes. I think these ones are actually like not bad when you get to play them for use the action on them for free especially the upgrade yellow one yeah yeah only only costing one to put into play is kind of a big deal here yeah like with how expensive a lot of the other tomes are it's it's pretty cheap i think that might be it it is yeah well that's a daisy walker uh she definitely gets more exciting when you have more tomes i it makes me want to play her because we, i've only played her at, when dunwich legacy came out um, no, if you really enjoy playing Daisy and you're looking at which cycle to pick up, I would re- highly recommend the Circle Undone, because you can notice, if you look back through the review we just did, at the start we were kind of like, hey, check out these good yellow and purple cards, and toward the end we were like, man, look at these f- sick tomes you can play. Yeah. Uh, in addition, if anyone uh, watching this has any other comments or advice for what new players should try with Daisy or, you know, what's a good investigator that pairs with them, let us know in the comments below. We do read them and we do respond. Uh, other than that, we'll see you guys in a few days as we continue through all of our core set investigators, in which case uh, after that we will then just be kind of like Gatling gun everybody else to try to get all these deck techs out. But in the meantime, you guys have a good one. See ya.